Welcome again to Solutionary TV. I am your host, Dr. Tatiana. It has been an exciting rolling out and evolution of disclosure here on planet Earth. There has been more that has been revealed to us in probably the last 24 months uh, than we have ever ha really had when it comes to understanding science, some of our human history, um, things that had to do with astrophysics, uh, quantum physics, uh, what's been going up in the cosmos. And many of you are aware because you are listening to Solutionary TV, thank you for your patronage, that there was a massive and very official data dump and disclosure with regards to extraterrestrials and um, unidentified aerial phenomenon. I love their terminology. We had members from the DOD, members of the Pentagon, Lockheed Martin, um, and a, a vast group of disclosure about mid-December, letting us know that there is so much more going on. And what happened? What happened with this data dump? Absolutely nothing. It was crickets. And it has so much to do with our understanding about our place in the universe and having things spoon-fed to us for so long that we stop becoming critical thinkers. So tonight we have a very special guest. Her name is Sherry Lynn, and she is going to be joining us and bringing to light so much more that is missing in this vast equation. Let me tell you a bit about Sherry. Sherry is a gifted, insightful visionary and energy worker with over 30 years of study in the esoteric, Ordained as a Christian spiritualist minister at the age of 26, her thirst for knowledge sparked many profound encounters with worldly and otherworldly messengers. Sherry is a UFO contactee and activator of higher dimensions, empowers others to embrace this awakening of humanity to be ambassadors of peace and healing. Sherry shares through her own experiences and work within these higher dimensions the shift of old paradigms to welcome the new earth humanity. Sherry is the creator of the Pleiadian Cosmic Healing Discs, healing tools to enhance one's connection to their higher self using light and frequency to move energy throughout the subtle fields surrounding and through our bodies. These tools are a gift from the Pleiadians themselves. We'll hear a little bit more about them, making them easy to use yet profound ET technology. Sherry will be hosting the first global intergalactic healing experiment in Ohio coming up in September of this year. There's a lot going on. Sherry, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tatiana. I'm so pleased and thrilled to be here with you. Well, we are tickled to have you here because there is no um, lack of topics that we can actually cover. You heard our intro. I know that you and I both have agreements on what has been kept from the public. Very often it's because we, we need to hear things in in temperament to where we are with our personal growth, but we've gotten way, way beyond that, haven't we, Sherry, when it comes to really understanding our place in the cosmos, our own capacity for human evolution, the brotherhood and sisterhood that exists within, you know, the realms within realms. Let's just kind of talk about what you see as being in, in your current focus and in your teaching and obviously in this um, global intergalactic healing experiment. What is so needed right now, Sherry? I believe what's really needed is self-care. I think we need to take care of ourselves at this time and we need to be gentle with ourselves because we are being assisted. Sometimes we don't feel it. We can't really, you know, we're, we're looking for something. It seems like the light workers are constantly, they feel alone and that they're under attack right now. Mm -hmm. But in, in the gist of things, we are, you know, being assisted. And I think that it's very important for people to realize that this assistance, you know, is is love. And it's very important for us to really connect with, you know, our higher, higher self and taking care of ourselves means that, you know, it's self-care, self-love is very important at this time. And that means doing your prayers and your meditation and paying attention and all of the information that we're inundated right now, we're waiting, we've been waiting for so long for things to happen. And it's it's very important to, I believe, just maintain a sense of optimism at this time that it can be so overwhelming. Right. And we have many that are probably viewing tonight that are aware of the over 24,000 sealed indictments that have taken place uh, within the Trump administration. Um, there was a state of emergency that was declared, which gives a lot of um, near limitless powers that, that many are very concerned about. There's a lot of fear porn and fear mongering going on. We have many that think that 
maybe he in, in and of himself is the Antichrist. And, and, and many don't get that there are power structures behind what we have been taught to, to embody and believe are the true power structures. And, and in that being the case, we often think that who we voted for is who's going to be able to best represent us because we don't understand that there's a lot of puppeteering that's going on. These 24 sealed indictments are looking to touch on that, but let's, let's sway what other, others have been focusing on, showing them that there's a correlation and draw them back into the bigger picture about who we are as sentient life on, on planet Earth, what is going on at this pivotal time in human history, um, we, I know you have so many areas of topics. I, I know the fractals in We Are the Gods is something that would really marry beautifully into that question, but let's just start with that there, Sherry. Let's talk about who we are and what we're going through right now so that we can keep taking that self-care and that hope to the next level. I think it's interesting that the craziness is happening on this planet like right now, and it's very important to recognize who we are and why we're here because we've never been told that. So what a, an amazing opportunity to be able to look into all of these different modalities and these different things that we can do for ourselves. And I mean, the dark energy is on the surface. So what are we gonna do? You know, we need to pay attention. Um, I've been following a little bit of the Q information that's coming in. And what is that I find very positive about that is that it's it's driving people to research. What do these things mean? Mm -hmm. I, I don't put any stock in any of these things quite yet. Nothing to do with a, with a president. I believe that we are the ones that we are waiting for and that there are a lot of us that are ushering in this new humanity. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the new humanity, the new earth humanity, as you define it. Can you, can you give a, a, a fuller description of that for our audience, Sherry? I believe that, you know, we're cosmic beings and we're galactic beings. We were somewhere before we came here and we're going to be, you know, in another existence, you know, after this. Mm -hmm. And part of our ascension, you know, we take our bodies with us in this ascension that's happening right now. So it's very important to take care of ourselves and realize that we're in this experience for a very profound purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, the new earth, earth humanity is is the enlightened beings that we we are here to be. So while we're in this meat suit and going through <laughs> this existence, how can we keep our, our vibrations as high as we possibly can? And it's it comes down to being uh, the new the new earth humanity are people who are aware of their ka body and in the divine axis and staying you know centered in the body and grounded to Mother Earth because I believe that. The new earth humanity is very deeply connected to Sophia. We always are, but we need to enhance that connection to our divine galactic cosmic mother that, you know, birthed all of humanity. So we need to awaken to her true uh, ideal for what humanity, you know, is to be. Mm -hmm. So studying the Gnostic text has really put into perspective for me what is happening on this planet right now. And when it comes to the, the energy that we're seeing um, throughout the government and these indictments in which we're talking about, it's all in divine order. We have to realize and remember that, that everything is in divine order at this time. Mm -hmm. So Sophia has a plan. Our mother has a plan. And you know, we are in her correction. So with all of these things on the surface, and it's making it very hard to maneuver around in this physical body because these energies, you know, they want to stay in control and they're losing the game. Mm -hmm. So we need right now to be very, very, very connected to the mother. And it, it has to do with us healing our relationships with our brothers and sisters who are walking this plane with us at this time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think you absolutely spearheaded it. It is a, a point of self-love and reflection um, that allows inclusiveness and allows for um, full integration of our shadow and the parts of ourselves that we don't love that must be a precedent to being able to be in forgiveness of our brothers and sisters and in that loving relationship. Wouldn't you say, Sherry, that that's really where it comes to the self-love that allows us to be able to pivot and be able to extend that out in a much more global way? 
Well, we're always thinking that we're in need of something, that we need more. We need relationships. We need more love. We need all of these things, you know, but we've, we're, we're at a time when all of our relationships need to be healed and it has to start with our relationship with ourself. Mm -hmm. And it can't be any more prevalent than right now. I think all of us are seeing it. People are feeling very lonely. People are feeling very lost and they're searching for information. I was just in Cincinnati at the Victory of Light and it's, it's incredible how many are awakening to really wanting to know that there is going to be assistance from our galactic brothers and sisters. You know, they want to know that other people are seeing what they're seeing and feeling because their families who aren't able, you know, people in their family may not be capable of even acknowledging these things. I mean, it, the, one of the one of the hardest things that we ever do is take a look at ourselves and start asking questions that, you know, go against the belief systems that our all of society has been, you know, based on. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think that one of the one of the most important things we can do as well is to, you know, move away from the stories that always, you know, we're not our story. I think we're waking up at this time, you know, every morning being a different person that, than we were the night we went to bed. <laughs> so it's like, what what is my story? I prefer to have uh no story at this time. I think that that's really where we're going. It doesn't serve me to not feel as though I have a purpose and a job to do, and it's all happening now, future, present, and past is all happening now, and it's all coming to this accumulation, so we must be very, very gentle with ourselves at this time so that we can stay focused on bringing in and ushering a new earth humanity, which is a whole new way of being. I don't believe there's gonna be a reform of the government. I think that once these, once this truth is out, it, it can't be reformed. We have to move in a new way. Mm -hmm. And if we are the ones that we are waiting for, how are we going to band together at this time and usher it in? Mm -hmm. I've had connection with a lot of people in my in my soul family who believe that the Native Americans are holding a very large part in what is going to come with, I mean, it's all been based on bloodlines. So what is to be in the future is what was of the past in a new way. Okay. Well, you know, I think that so many times we as individuals and collectively as a society, we find relevance and we find pertinence in our lives through special circumstances, epiphanies, deja vus, very um, uh, pivotal contacts that we've had that seem beyond the 3D limitations. And I know that you're a contactee and you are self-described as being even uh, like a, a Pleiadian um, energy worker and being, bringing and, and maybe channeling these tools through. Let's talk about why you have got so much hope and why this new earth doesn't seem like an intangible, laughable concept to you. There is, there is a story that you've built around being a contactee and how you've continued to um, get divine data downloads, a term that I always fondly refer to is just when truth flows through us. Um, share a little bit about your story, Sherry, and that is going to bring some relevance to others that are going, what is she talking about with, you know, these changes and, and a new earth and, and, you know, the systems coming apart. Some are not really as broad in the concept of, of how many um, colliding multi-realities are coming together into being perceived by us at this time. I believe I, I believe that I came into this particular lifetime at this time to catch up. And I believe that I was being shown in many lifetimes what was needed for me to, um, you know, be more conscious in this mm -hmm. now to be here when all of these really amazing things are happening. So I started out very early learning about astrology. And astrology has been a major part of my life because I believe that astrology, everything is, is explainable through astrology. So even being a very young, I was nine years old and wanted to know what everybody's sign was and wanted to know about characteristics. And I believe that uh, what it, it I came to my understanding was that we are the stars and we move just like the heavens move. Mm -hmm. So on my quest for more knowledge, it, it didn't come from high school. It didn't come from school. They didn't teach me anything that I wanted to know. I found these things, you know, reading my mother's psychology books and reading astrology books. And 
then I was I was lucky enough to be able to you know create my own store in uh, the early 2000s and a metaphysical store where everybody could come in and have an opportunity to learn about things that would, would help them connect more so with their galactic selves, mm -hmm. you know, and our earthly selves as well, because we've got crystals and energy tools that are available from this beloved planet of ours. So being able to travel and hear these masters speak and meet these masters um, and one of the most profound work that I ever encountered was the work of Barbara Hanclow. Mm -hmm. And I started following Barbara in 2005 and attending her activations for the nine dimensions. And she had written the Pleiadian agenda and the alchemy of the, of the nine dimensions, which was it, that was a very, it was a huge turning point in my life, very much inspired me because I believe that when we understand the the function of the dimensions and how they how they work and that each one of these dimensions is a particular frequency and while we are in 3D in this we are 3D our meat suits put us exactly in 3D that's us we are the keepers of this third dimension so when we realize that you know, everything that's happening here, we have a part in creating the reality of it. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the most exciting experiences that I had was learning how the dimensions work. So once that information came in and I started to download on very, you know, very quickly, these downloads and these codes started to come in and I started to be visited once again, but more with a knowledge of where these uh, visitations could be coming from and what kind of energy and frequency that they were carrying. So um, I started to have very profound uh, encounters with higher dimensional beings. It would be gods, goddesses, those things happening, as well as um, feelings and being able to put myself in these dimensions where all of the, everything is accessible at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have a lot of guests that have come on recently and we've talked about expanded states of consciousness. So just to marry all of these worlds together, Sherry, we understand from Dr. Evan Alexander, who's been on the show and has experienced a very, very profound and personal witness of having a mind, a brain, uh, gray matter, that the meat suit, right, that, that would not have mm -hmm. been able to have manufactured the storyline that he experienced that felt like it was months, if not years, out of the body when he was unconscious for seven days and and is a very big proponent for science re-examining the, the materialistic model that consciousness is relegated to the brain. Very strong advocate for that. We've had those that are here that have been shamans and they've talked about uh, the native people and even the recent Western resurgence of studying psychedelics and shamanic practices and deep meditative states. We've had Kelvin Shin come on and talk about his meditative practices and, and getting over the fear of death because you feel the eternality and the multi multi-dimensionality that the soul actually is. I believe that's what I'm hearing you say is that we really need to see the much larger picture of um, who we are, not just as an embodied 3D version of ourselves, but um, layered multidimensionality that we, with more information, can co-create more deliberately in. Is that correct, Sherry? Yes, all of the all the information is accessible to us at all times, or we wouldn't have chosen to be here in this experience now when it's needed the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the most exciting experiences that we can be having right now. So let's talk about the new earth then. What does that mean for us? We've got some time and I don't mind digging in. You mentioned the Gnostic Gospels and Sophia and um, and I want to go there as well and I'm sure that the two will eventually shake hands and, and find a segue in between. But when we talk about a new earth, I, I know that many understand the idea of progression, that it's an eternal principle um, and that Things have a tendency to evolve, maybe not quite the way that Darwin threw out at us, but that we are meant to actually be evolving by nature. Let's talk about what the new earth is representing and what it's been offering us and what the esoterics have been warning and, and lovingly um, giving us foreknowledge of up until this point, Sherry. I, one of the, the most helpful things that I learned about the, the Sophian myth through the work of John Lamb Lash is the the creation of 
of all of humanity. And before we, the conscious evolving, you know, human species that was created through this experiment with the aeon, eon, God, goddess uh, connection, she, you know, Sophia, she birthed the archons first, and this could be the dark energies on the planet, mm -hmm. you know, that are they're the ones with the agenda that are trying to keep us from accessing our our divinity and our power so that was part of the whole design of the fourth dimension of the collective consciousness was to block out the access of all of these higher dimensionals so we have the fifth dimension which the pleiadians are the the keepers of and that's being in the heart place so once we realize that the duality and the right and the wrong only exist while we're here in this 3D body, we came to this planet to be anchors of light, to bring in these light codes that are always available to us to assist humanity at a time of great need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so with this, with the Sophian myth and her birthing the archons and in her correction, you know, what was she to do? I think that we needed to, we need to have complete and total empathy for the goddess, our mother, Sophia, at this time in her experiment with the archons, it went wrong. You know, it was like, what did she do? The best way to describe them was that she let loose the, the, the locus with the archons on this planet. And the art, what do you do with the locusts? You can't do anything. They're blind and they wreak havoc over everything. There's no stopping them. Yeah. So there was an interesting part in the Sophian myth where what did she do? Well, she allowed them, you know, to create this matrix of a reality. And it was like, you know, a mother needing time to fix dinner or fix, you know, fix the house up for guests. And what was she going to do with these crazy children of hers? Well, she's going to like sit them in front of a television. So that's what she did was she uh, allowed the archons to create this matrix and it was to um, distract them, you know, while she corrected the problem. So if we look at the the iCloud and the fact that everybody is people are talking about this whole matrix being that of which is like a computer. So once we understand that this is a reality that was created for us, but it's not the truth of us, I think that it's really going to inspire people to tap more into the energies that are necessary for us to bring forth together the new humanity on the earth, which is, you know, overcoming the control of the, the matrix is through uh, this understanding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I know that not all of our viewers are as adept at the Gnostic Gospels, maybe as familiar with Nag Hammadi documents that were found in Egypt and their correlation in some of the doctrine and the truth that can be found in Dead Sea Scrolls that were left by the Essenes. But there, there are very different deviations of Judeo-Christian history that many of us have not had the um, opportunity to have placed before us that can tell a much more um, expansive story and, and add to a lot of tapestry pieces that we just take for granted. You know, why a masculine deity and not a feminine deity? Why do we have elite strife between tribes and and almost built-in prejudices? Why do we have gods, plural, that fell to earth and mated with the daughters of men? And then it's the end of the story. We don't discuss it anymore. Why have there been so many, you know, conflicting commandments? We take so much for granted, but it's because we don't have those pieces and those answers. So, Shari, let's talk a little bit about um, the Sophian myth. I know for some, it's the Sophian truth. It simply is the esoteric truth. Uh, William Henry speaks very powerfully to, um, obviously, you know, books of Enoch and Nag Hammadi documents and, and, and some of these, um, these deeper mysteries that the average individual doesn't come by way of. But how do we explain? How do we explain our galactic brothers and sisters? And how do we explain a new earth if we don't kind of back up and then pull back forward again? So if you were just to kind of, in a nutshell, explain the, the forces of creation and of light and of darkness that then multiplied and created here for which we are all participants, um, I think that we will be able to um, get a better framework. Can you help us with that? 
Well, I think too, we can look at the fact that the, the 5,500 years of patriarchal actually ended according to John Major Jenkins book about the 2012 cosmology, the, the patriarchal ended in September of 2010. So we are full on in matriarchal. And every time we go from patriarchal to matriarchal, it comes in in a whole new way. And it's up to, I think, the, the, the women embracing the divine feminine and really concentrating on healing our relationships with men and, and assisting the divine masculine to heal itself as well. You know, we need to do this together and we need to do it without creating a hierarchy. So what we're seeing, I think, is, is what's wrong is our relationships. We don't feel like we're supported. We don't feel that we have the closeness around us through from our brothers and sisters. And it really, it, it comes down to having to heal our relationships. The divine, to heal the divine feminine is for women to heal the relationships with women. Mm -hmm. And then we can start really working on our relationships with men. I think it's going to, it's going to take quite a bit for us to do this. And one of the, with the, the summit, the, global intergalactic healing experiment is to do a keening and it was be a global keening where women gather together in a circle and we wail and we cry for all of the pain of our mother of Sophia and have true empathy for their plight for her plight and the plight that we have in this human experience and you know give up all of our pain and our sorrow how many times have, have we how many lifetimes must we give up our children to fight for this nonsense that is created from you know whatever is not human on this planet so we really need to tap into that emotional place and then we need to be assisted you know through our relationships with each other so a keening this global keening that i'd like to see take place would be that the women gather together and we give up all of this pain and we allow the men the space to witness and let them be in a position to protect us. The women would come into the middle of the circle. The men would circle us with their backs to us, protecting us at this time of, of healing and sorrow and this release to, you know, just give back to this earth, knowing that we, you know, had a great deal to do with the pain and the suffering on this planet because we don't know what to do. It's like Christ said, you know, they know not what, what they do, mm -hmm. and we're still up against this particular energy. Mm -hmm. So it it's important to, you know, know that we're responsible mm -hmm. for the healing of not only our relationships, but our relationship with the mother and the relationship that she is trying so desperately to reinforce for us. So this... Uh first global intergalactic healing experiment is a keening a bonding and and basically an ameliorating of the of the pain of humanity through the expression of feminine it's bonding it's just a piece of the summit uh -huh. you know the summit is about uh really tapping into um you know new technologies and it's going to be full on participation it's never been done before it's like we're trying to bring everybody together to experience you know shamanic journey sweat lodges ceremony and things of this nature bringing us back to the connection with the earth mm -hmm. you know we want to do you know fire walks and all kinds of experiencing these these new technologies and healing and frequencies that's available to us you know we talk about the healing computers it's all done on frequency mm -hmm. so the 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 summit is really about connecting on another level to be able to usher in you know what is needed so the summit we, we're going to do we actually did this at serpent mound we had uh, a small uh, little keening circle, but it's it's the beginning. So it's like it's something that needs to be connected to on a greater scale for the the keening to happen. So it's mm -hmm. it's every opportunity we get to be in ceremony. It's something that I'd like to help bring forward is this connection to the mother and the connection with our sisters 
and our brothers together and be participating in the healing you know so we have to you know that's where the self-care comes in let's get ourselves ready let's be let's be grounded let's be you know joined together in a purpose you know to usher in what's needed at this time right well, it sounds like there's a lot that's needed at this time because there are a great number of conferences that my my featured guests have been very forthcoming to introduce our audience to. Um, a lot of demand on consciousness understanding and the way that the brain works and what happens between the veils uh, and, and through the veil and how much we can actually access it while still in this physical incarnation, just by shifting the vibratory frequency of our energy. You are also involved in a conference that really uh, marries beautifully with this feminine matriarchal presence that's re-anchoring again, and it's based around uh, Venusian culture, which is very much um, uh, matriarchal, matrilineal. Let's talk about that. There is a From Venus with Love conference coming up in the uh, end of July. Why don't you give us the dates for that and some of what you know is going to be spoken about and that you're going to be touching on that complements with this global healing and this uh, maternal energy. I am so pleased that Rob called and invited me to this event. And I believe it happens July 21st through the 23rd at Mount Shasta. And I've been a fan of Rob and the fact that he is, you know, working with all different types of energy tools. And it, that's the thing, it's gotta be fun. And he makes it fun to use these tools and these technologies and that, that are ancient yet they're otherworldly. So it's, it's very exciting to be in the company of these great people that, you know, are working so hard to inspire and enlighten one another. So, and I've not been to Mount Shasta and I'm very excited to go and experience the energies of the mountain and just, you know, to absorb all of this work with, with these inspiring and wonderful people. Right. Well, I, I do understand that there is a common theme, Mount Shasta, for many that are um, deeply intuitive and, and kind of feel into the tenure of the land would say that it's kind of a more feminesque mountain. I understand that the that the energy towards this conference is very much in alignment with the return of the divine feminine, the determine uh, the return of the mother goddess, and that the Venusians, since this is a from Venus with love conference, are matriarchal. Can you speak to that at all, Sherry? Can you talk to us about how that is um, looking to kind of reintroduce itself to humanity here, so that we better understand it? Well, I think it's needed. I think that we're going to see more and more and more of it. And what Rob is doing, you know, it's like the tip of the iceberg, you know, so Venus, I think that Venus is rising just, just as, you know, my dear friend Raymond Keller talks about, you know, we are at this point where it, it's needed and women, you know, we hold so much power, you know, and what we, we've taught, you talked about, you know, the men and, and the gods and, and, you know, my brother talks about being, you know, Anki. I'm like, well, when are you going to talk about your mother? Where's your mother? It seems like, you know, we've got all this, this patriarchal control, you know, and Mars is this, this war planet. It's time to usher in the love of Venus. And Venus has never gotten her, her true, you know, praise and, and, you know, she, she's not respected for all that she gives, you know, and, uh, it's, it's interesting to me, too, that, uh, you know, Venus with her eight orbits and her dance with Earth creates, you know, a perfect pentacle in her travels. And, you know, with, the, with this esoteric work, you know, we see pentacles as associated with, with pagans and Wiccans, which, which, is, which is fine. But where's the Venus in that? We associate pentacles when it comes to, to tarot as, you know, earth element, you know, when, you know, that's Venus, it's Venus's dance. And it's really time to recognize what Venus has to offer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, with the clearing work and, and the work that we really are, are doing at this time, breaking contracts and breaking agreements is, um, you know, I believe that we, we did come from these different planets. We were these planets. And the only reason that we're, that we're here is to integrate what happened there and what's happening here. I have this theory about, um, you know, we were planets ourselves. And what's happened to these planets is that they've suffered destruction 
And, you know, we're just little dust particles that are rubbing up against each other. And this is the experience that we're having now. So let's make it the best and most beautiful experience we can mm -hmm. and return to the source of all of this creation. So it's, it's kind of like a healing at a much more microcosmic level. If we were representative of planets that experienced their own uh, wartime or their own um, friction against other energy bodies, what you're saying is we as microscopic aspects of that stellar dust are now embodying and experiencing it and healing it at a different level? Very much so. And I think that we're part of the correction. That's part of the whole correction of what's going on at this time. Well, that's a perfect lead into fractals. We are gods. This was a topic that you and I were excited to, to discuss with our audience. Uh, many are following quantum physics and they understand the Mandelbrot set and that um, the, the universe can be seen, whether you're looking at quantum computers or it's being explained to you in, in a more mathematical way format in, in pictorials in color and texture, that everything through Fibonacci sequence and the rotation of growth has a tendency to spiral out of itself and create repeating patterns again and again. Let's talk about the fractalized universe and, and how that applies to us as being uh, creator gods or, or co-creators, Sherry. Everything that we experience on this planet is based on old belief system. You know, when it comes to the constellations in the sky, in the heavens, like mirroring back to us, you know, we take on these stories. It's like I've embodied the archetype of Ishtar in this lifetime, and really it's about her evolution. I'm not the only Ishtar, you know, there's there's more like my brother being Anki. There are a lot of people that are experiencing these archetypal energies, and that's where the fractal aspect comes into it. It takes all of us. We've been repeating these stories over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, so when when do we start to realize that that story doesn't work? When do we realize that we can't keep fighting the same battles that we fought over and over again? You know, the the when does it end? You know, and it's got it's got to end with the fact that, you know, we're here to be love and that we're love, you know, that's that's what we are. Mm -hmm. You know, and knowing that we're love beyond measure is the universal law. So, and I think that's something that's missing so much, Sherry. Let's talk about that love. It, the kind of conviction that those that have had deep, deeply powerful penetrating meditative experiences will come back and say, the love that I found there was, was insurmountable. I can't, I can't even describe it. Those that have passed beyond the veil in their physical bodies, out of their physical bodies and back in again, have come back with that same profound statement. Where does your conviction and your testimony of that profound love come from it's like at the deepest darkest points in my life i did go through a dark night of the soul and it lasted for three years so it was constant work on moving out of this depressive state and the ideas of being you know under attack and I asked, you have to ask. I think that people need to realize that they're not alone. And the only way that you really realize it is if you start asking for assistance, you know, praying for assistance, awaken me to 5D reality. And again and again and again, every time I've asked for something, I've been shown that. Mm -hmm. And what I, there's a cute little story about what makes me a contactee. And it was an official contactee, I guess we could say, is in 2008, I was with my, my dear friend, Michael Lee Hill, and we were in Lake Pymatuming. And we had witnessed all kinds of craft before on the shores of Lake Erie, but this particular time we were in at Lake Pymatuming in Ohio. And it was it was it was a time in which him and I were trying to um, define our own uh, relationships, not only with each other, but you know individually. And it was a trying time and had a lot of questions. And at this particular encounter, um, I was crying and feeling sorry for myself at the time. And I walked away from him. And of course, because he's a nice guy, he, you know, walked up behind me and we looked up and in between these two pine trees was this beautiful white light in the shape of a 
like a snow angel was the shape of this craft and it got really really bright and it came closer and closer through these two pine trees and it had a pink and a blue light on it and it spoke to me and this was the first time in witnessing any kind of craft that I was spoken to and it was so it without any doubt could hear it clearly and what I was told was Sherry we love you we love you Sherry over and over and over again mm. and it was one of the most beautiful and profound experiences I'd ever had and it was confirmation once again um, from these higher dimensions, these angels, whatever you want to call them, that I am loved. I've had many healings and many experiences in my lifetime where this profound love is shown to me during healing sessions um, in, in profound ways. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, people coming out of the woodwork out of nowhere and, and you know, telling you that you're loved. It, it's, it's these signs and these answers are given to us all the time. We need to ask. And then we need to get out of the way to be able to receive the answers in any way, shape, or form that they come to us. Now, how would you recommend to our, our viewing audience to go about asking in a way that is tempered, still, still with some stretch and some give, and challenging existing belief systems and limiting co-creative, um, you know, knee-jerk responses that they may be having right now, but to find that next bandwidth of understanding so that as they are experiencing their own evolution and, and maybe a fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional, more consciously intended experience that they're not in fear about everything that exists in that void because we're missing so many key details. How would you recommend that they go forward courageously and create um, a, a buffer of space that is hopeful, that is filled with love and, and still also open to understanding? Well, it's always either love or fear. So the question should be, you know, am I am I acting, am I making this choice out of love or am I making this choice out of fear? It's also good to ask, does this serve my highest evolutionary growth? Does this serve the highest, you know, growth and the evolution for humanity? You know, and there, there are questions uh, that come when we realize that, there is more for us to do than just keep working in this system that blocks us from really connecting on so many different levels. It's all by design. Everything has been by design to distract us. You know, so it's like, when are we going to stop participating? in the things that do not serve the highest good of humanity. There has to be a line drawn in the sand. Mm -hmm. You know, we're no longer going to, you know, engage in uh, listening to governments that really don't have their be our best interest at heart. You know, it, it comes to, to down to wanting to uh, make a difference in, in our own lives and start healing the, the pain and the fear that we, you know, it, it was all designed for us. So mm -hmm. moving away from the fear and loving yourself and being creative is one of the most, uh, you know, profound ways mm -hmm. of moving into new realities for uh, ourselves. Yeah, I agree. And I think, though, that part of moving out of fear is to be educated and to move through the discomfort that comes with that education. We can't completely be blind to some of the hidden truths that are now starting to emerge with disclosure, some of the hidden truths that we need to know about ourselves that we're really not a victim to our, our bodies or a victim to others or a victim to viruses and bacteria, but that we are in a delicate dance of co-creation at all times where we are more in synchronicity or in resonance with those experiences, with those individuals, with those other um, aspects of physical manifestation. And, and I think I would like to just kind of touch on the fact that the educational piece, uh, if we really want to understand what's at stake here, it really is your soul. I don't know where your origins were. Many of our viewers and listeners came from some religious belief system or they came from parents that held to their own dogma. But there is a true trajectory, as, and, and science is doing a beautiful job of corroborating what we once used to be able to you know, systematically uh, turn down and discard as not being materialistic scientific enough. We, we recognize that energy is, that everything is frequency and wave, that some of it has some density and materiality to it, but that's less than 
what, 5% of the universe, Sherry? So getting really clear, I am a very powerful being. I experience physicality, but I also experience other levels of dimensions. There are other things, intelligent, um, um, embodied, discarnate, um, far more uh, well, I th- aware I think, than myself. I think you nailed it with, it's an education. Mm-hmm. You know, when people say, I don't believe in that, it's because they don't really know anything about it. Right. So belief is very much so in, in education. And we're we're at a time when, you know, there you can search on the internet for any kind of information that you want. You can start to learn about any, any, anything that everybody's having these experiences that are profound and they're right there at our fingertips. So what is it that we can learn about, you know, and we really got to start talking about our, our you know, talking and speaking our truth. It's like, what does the Pleiadian say? They say that, you know, fear of expression retards evolution, you know? So Let's express our, our truth and let's express what it is that we're finding in the education that, you know, we seek out ourselves just to make ourselves better and more informed individuals about the truth of who we really are. Right. And, and touching back on the fractals and we are gods, that was a, a term that you actually sent me. I recognize that a lot that are doing spiritual work are concerned about the experience of their personal falling away or their annihilation. There's a movie that came out with this recently and touched on it and and had some real beautiful science and also some fear in it is that we are afraid of losing ourselves, Sherry. How do we become whole and how do we um, find ourselves at peace with the rest of humanity and moving in a spiritual trajectory that looks like human evolution and not be afraid of losing our character, our personality, our egos? Do you speak to that at all in, in some of your professional conferences? Sure. I mean, the ego is a big part of it. I mean, I believe that, you know, we were the gods that were always herald, you know, so it's like, let's, let's move beyond these stories. I think that that's really what we need to concentrate on is like, if, if we are to birth a new humanity, it's, it, everything is different. That means that the stars in the skies are completely different. What are we going to project upon them? What we had projected on them in the past was us. And these stories no longer, you know, really, they, they no longer serve us. Mm-hmm. So I have this whole theory about facing our fears and what has does fear look like? And on, on this planet, what was the very first thing that, you know, the Bible, you know, makes, you know, demonizes is the serpent, you know? And I believe that the serpent is one of the most cosmic and ancient symbols on this planet and we can look at cobras which have been a very integral part in my uh profound experiences all of them that have shaped a new reality for me has in some way had cobra goddess Mm -hmm. attached to it so one of my Mm -hmm. theories is um we're going to have to face Mm -hmm. every fear that we have and look it dead in the face and it's like I see it as this big serpent face to face with us. And what are you going to do when you're faced in that fear? You let go of that fear. You kiss the snake. You ride the Mm -hmm. snake into through this wormhole into where our new world is going to exist. And then we project upon these constellations, if you will, a new reality, which ultimately is to have no story and to be able to step fully into our bliss. It's our God-given right to experience joy, bliss, and ecstaticism. And the future does not have war. The future does not hold duality. Mm -hmm. That's only in this experience. And this planet being a, a prison planet where all of these dark energies reside, it it is, it's, it's of the essence to, you know, do all the work that we possibly can, you know, to remove ourselves from fear. Now, I agree with that completely, but I also realize that walking tools, walking, marching, you know, standing tools that are implementable for those that are on the path of education and are looking to liberate themselves from um, being sucked in to old belief systems and old paradigms or darker energies feeding off of them, you know, triggering loose, getting conflicts in relationships. We still need to have some 
um, active tools for staying out of fear. What do you tell those that you serve uh, in being able to see their power, their co-creative power, when they're met with something that is trying to weaken them or trigger them into fear? Prayer and meditation, prayer and meditation. And we need to look at, especially with all of these dark ener energies on the planet right now, what we have a responsibility. What are our behaviors? If, if we keep experiencing the mm -hmm. same thing over and over again and carrying this fear, uh, what is it that we're doing that we need to change? It's like the beginning of this year, it was like, wow, I've heard so many people and myself even, I have to put this away. It no longer serves me. Mm -hmm. And it's like once it, it, it can't go into this year do it, repeating the same patterns that I've repeated in the past. So prayer and meditation is key. It's very key to, to, for self-discipline as we're, as we're moving forward, you know, we've got this huge responsibility to take care of uh, ourselves and be clear. Now, do you see the new humanity being an alignment or being another term that describes what many on the internet, and, and I have certainly participated in this, are calling the event, um, you know, they're calling it the shift, they're calling it the ascension? Well, I think the event and the shift, I think it's all wonderful. <laughs> and I, it's like, I know that there's been time frames that have been put out there lately. And of course, again, once again, like, you know, I was a big fan of 2012 and people saying, oh, nothing happened. You know, it's, it's hard to say when, mm -hmm. but I think that it's really going to be helpful, you know, to take a look at, uh, you know, how the information coming out in the darkness, you know, about the darkness on this planet, where are we at in that? You know, what can we do to remain, uh, you know, to have humility? You know, what can we do to, to show others that there's strength in our conviction to um, use affirmations and do the work that we need to do to center and ground? It seems like a lot of the energy um, that we're up against right now is from these multidimensional wars that we took place in with for so many years before this eons lifetimes and it seems like it's all coming to a head once again mm -hmm. so it's very important to clear our energies mm -hmm. well absolutely constantly. clearing our energies and being in a constant state of reflection of what's coming up for us now. Um, why are we being triggered by this particular individual? What are we in resistance to when it comes to, um, you know, stepping into being more spatially aware at all times instead of collapsing into old prejudices? I mean, we really do have a lot of, of moment by moment being in that present moment to examine ourselves before we can make that a replicable effect. Um, that is a resonant frequency that others pick up on, Sherry. And I, I know that that's why it's so important that not, we not only be out there embodying it and walking our talk, but that we be speaking to these facts, that we have these conferences and these speaking opportunities, these trainings, writing these books. I know that you had mentioned you have a book that is um, yearning to come out through you and is going to be a compliment to some of the work that you're discussing now. Um, as we're rounding up on the hour, let's tell some of our, our, our viewers where they can find you and some of the conference and the speaking opportunities that we've already touched on. Uh, and anything else you would like to draw their attention to, Sherry? My next big event that I'll be at will be near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'll be at the Empowered Light Conference. Um, and there's, they've, they've been having some really amazing speakers. Corey Good was there last fall. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. these events are really an opportunity for everybody to reach out and, and see what's available. And, you know, we've got information coming through, like, with all the, everybody's carrying the, these these messages for the new time. So I will be um, at Empowered Light. I will be with um, with Rob Potter in July. Very, very excited about that. And what I've been doing lately is it seems like the last three years, it's been a lot of work for me and I've been creating these tools. So I create cosmic healing discs, which are tools 
that are very simple yet profound to keep uh, you know clear our energy clear so they they do move in direct energy throughout the field and the discs the very first thing they do is clear negative thought forms so they're very very you know useful at this time when we're up against these these arconic energies on the planet it's very protective to our field i th i think it's very important that we're conscious of that Right. That, that is exciting. And did you have some websites that you could refer people back to the from Venus with Love and Mount Shasta? Do you have that website handy, Shari, so that our viewers can find it and the uh, Global Inter Intergalactic Healing Experiment that you've got coming up in Ohio? Well, you can always visit my website. It's Cosmic Healing Discs. And that's discs with a C mm -hmm. dot com. I have the information for Rob's uh, conference on my page and you can just click the banner and it will take you right to Rob's work. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to, to see what new technologies are going to be brought forth in Mount Shasta at this time. Mm -hmm. This year is, is, it's a big year for us to, you know, be able to, to witness what we light workers have been talking about and doing all these years. True. I mean, it's a, it's a cumulative and, and honestly a birthing effort that seems to be I'm reaching a crescendo, and I'm excited to be participating in that conference in uh, in July at Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta is kind of a special place for me. I grew up in Southern California, Sherry, and I had shared with Rob when he had, um, prior to him being a guest on the show, that um, prophetic dreams being part of my intuitive awakening and and one of my more developed skill sets as a child moving into my healing work as a practitioner and then, of course, doing this show was to always have to examine those prophetic dreams. They were always giving me heads up about the, um, the potentials that I was creating in terms of uh, trajectory and, and life as it would evolve for me. And not everything's going to happen, but we're given forewarnings. We're deeply intuitive beings and prophetic dreams were mine. And I always saw myself going to Mount Shasta because the people in the, in the mountain were waiting for me and they were my people. I know that sounds to anyone that doesn't have that internal kind of calling or intuitive hits for places that shouldn't feel familiar that do wouldn't make a lot of sense it certainly didn't make sense to me given my the dogma and the culture that i was raised in but it's something that makes a lot of sense to me now and it's the first time that i get to go and experience it so i believe that there's a lot of power in divine timing and bringing the right people together because we build quantum fields of momentum within themselves don't you agree sherry very much so this is the time, and we are the ones that we are waiting for. Yeah. That's the best quote I've heard all day, and I think that nothing would bring us more relief than to realize that as long as we keep putting the power outside of ourselves, as long as we keep seeing it slightly out of reach, you know, someone else's generation, not quite the right timing yet, we continue to play those archetypal roles of the victim, the child, even sometimes the saboteur and the prostitute. And in this case, we really want to believe and embody that we are the ones we are looking for because the answers are all here. Yes? And we've already done all that. We've all been victim and we've all been perpetrator. Yeah. And we're being assisted by these higher dimensionals and these, these assisted masters in all of this clearing work that we're doing. It's like I've done some spiritually accelerated clearing work in the last two years and the, the saints and, and these, these ascended masters, they appear to us. So they're available to everybody at all times. Mm -hmm. Just seek it out and make it happen. Yeah. Seek it out with a lot of faith and conviction and maybe even a little bit of a two-year-old tantrum stomping your foot. I really need this help right now. It's okay to get mad. Yeah. It's like, you know, we only call the doctor when we need the medicine, you know, so we're all in need of the medicine and it's very a powerful time for us to awaken the shaman within. I agree. So I agree. What, what, we, all, we all have the capabilities of healing ourselves and to heal each other. And these tools are coming available. And I know that you're part of that. I, I really do encourage our audience members to go to your site, to go to the websites where you're going to be speaking. We're more uh, dynamic and, and ongoing flowing content around this self-healing renaissance is coming about and, and a healing of humanity and the new earth. Sherry, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been such a pleasure having you. That hour went by far too quickly for all that we could have oh, discussed. Oh, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to remind our viewers, we are grateful for you. You show up here faithfully every Monday night and you are eager to support our, our featured guests. Their content isn't always everyone's cup of tea and we're not everyone's show. And we're okay with that because we're actually here for you. We're here, we're here for you, and we know that you're here for us, and we're going to continue to get to together build out this storyline into a new humanity, into evolved and solutionary systems that we can all live in. 
And I just want to remind you together, we are the solution. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net. <laughs> 